What's up, fellow Lords of Gaming? Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Future Fight. Today, we're going to jump into the Marauders, Quiet, Quiet Council, whatever the hell they call in this thing, update that I think is going to be off-putting to a lot of people, specifically because of the uniforms. And it's something that I didn't even consider when they first announced the update. But if you were to go inside both characters, it's cool to basically have at these uniforms and have access to them. But you really don't. What I mean by that is like Kitty Pride, for instance. I think a lot of people, you know, probably, you know, fans of Kitty Pride, the uniform really doesn't really. I don't know. Something about the uniforms just really doesn't like do it for me. Um, like her hands, like huge as fuck. I was sad to see that carried over. And now I can see why her other hand looked huge as hell inside the trailer. Because if you look at her grappling this sword right here, like, yo, what the hell is going on with this uniform? Like, for real, for real, you know, I'm not trying to be like an asshole or like, you know, to 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 like downplay the game or anything. But this is like this uniform for me is not a success. It's not a pass in any way, shape or form. Like that's me just being real. Right. Real, real talk. So um, problem, though, is like, OK, well, you want to get the uniform Red Queen uniforms in, in, in gear. You really want to play the character? Well, mm, you got to get the character bios and you can see I have zero of 30 character bios, right? Uh, already, I can see it's a bad uniform option in terms of its Gambit Excalibur. Like who really wants to purchase Gambit's Excalibur uniform at this point in the game, right? So then when you come over here, you realize the only way for you to get Kitty Bi Kitty Pride bios is through uh, the 20 X Gene daily subscription. So if you don't do that, that means that you have to make your way over to the shop to get a up, uh, mega uniform upgrade ticket, right? So there's a couple of ways for you to do that right now. And I'll walk that to through you in a second. But unfortunately, so that's the same exact thing for Professor X. And the reason why I say it's the same exact thing for Professor X is because unfortunately, if you actually go look at Professor X's bios, you can't even get Professor X's bios from um, from the 20 X genes daily. You have to get it from contribution rewards and dimension missions. I play dimension mission every day every day i think most players play dimension mission every day guess what i've only gotten 16 bios of professor x inside there so this is almost a guarantee like must spend money on this i need a mega uniform upgrade ticket now i am going to upgrade professor x i'll show you why or tell you why in a second but basically you've got to come over to the shop right and you're going to basically have to purchase a mega upgrade uniform ticket inside of here that's unfortunate right because essentially each mega uniform upgrade ticket is going to cost you about 40 bucks where is this uniform upgrade ticket uh i can't find the damn thing now um let me see uh let's see like sure there you go uniform upgrade ticket so like essentially i gotta come inside here and i gotta purchase this uniform upgrade ticket right now the one good thing about this about the mega uniform upgrade ticket is like if you need crystals right we're coming up on the you know anniversary stuff for the game but if you need crystals it's not that bad because you're getting 3200 crystals that's basically in this game the equivalency of 32 dollars and then you basically get the mega uniform upgrade ticket for seven dollars right so you went out in a little bit like i need some mega uniform i need some crystals i just don't know that i wanted to purchase this uniform upgrade ticket you know for for them now notice that there's a limit of one right so like i like i, I only get one right now right um but the only other way for you to do this is basically to go through the um future pass the future pass includes a i think it's a mega uniform upgrade ticket yeah it's a mega uniform upgrade ticket so you basically have to upgrade right to get the rewards that's ten dollars right there and then you can upgrade to the second future pass legendary which is 29.99 so it's another 40 it's basically another 40 dollars that you have to basically pay in to get this now you get a you know mega upgrade ticket nobody really cares about that and you'll get like some of the other crystal exchanges inside here as well for that 40 bucks Unfortunately, the, it, I think that's going to put a lot of people off because that's $80 between both characters to basically get their uniforms. This doesn't really hit, hit hard for that. 
Now, I do have to say, however, that I'm loving the way that Professor X's uniform looks. Now, if you were to go down and hear my custom gear, you can see I already equipped Professor X with a CTP of Rage a while ago. Professor X, you know, uh, Martin Luther King, I mean, Professor X, Martin Luther King, MLK, I mean, Professor X, um, you know, it basically is was one of my favorite X-Men characters, especially him standing like when they had him standing back. I didn't never really like the wheelchair thing. Um, but I want to show you his skills. So they've changed some of the art on his skills or maybe it's my computer or something like that, you know, um, but like his skills look absolutely beautiful. Like, I don't know what it is about Professor X's skills, but they look absolutely amazing to me. Like this skill right here, his two skill to me is just fucking asininely funny. Boom, bitch smacked. <laughs> Like, my man, <laughs> Professor X literally slapped the hell out of somebody as he was walking forward. He slapped them with a psionic slap, like, like for real, for real. The third skill looks absolutely beautiful. The colors and everything, I don't know what it is, but the character looks majestic, in my opinion, right? My man walking through, like, tell me that they did not, like, you, look, 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 look. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me give you guys something here. You cannot tell me that they did not pimp out professor x in this costume you can't say that you just honestly can't in his second skill he literally pimp slaps somebody right and then his fourth skill he literally walks out with the chalice as he just spanks you like and then raises a toast to your ass like he got his pimp chalice he got his pimp cup how many people remember the dave Chappelle skits my man literally has the pimp chalice like it's crazy Fifth skill looks still amazing inside of the skill overall. Summer in like you know, he's just using Cerebo. And the six the sixth skill, nothing really changes there on a sixth skill. Uh, I wish they would have updated the sixth skill visuals a little bit more, but it's a powerful skill. His tier four with the X symbols, you know, it's it, it ain't doing anything as much as what his skills already look like to me, right? So it's kind of like really cool and just the fact that that's what we got for Professor X. So his skills look absolutely amazing to me. Even for my character, I was, I, I literally went back and I couldn't remember. I was like, damn, you know, like, um, I actually equip Professor X with like ESO 8s. Like this was before, like, you see, I left some of them blank and stuff like that in there but i actually equipped this dude with iso uh excuse me with odin's blessings and gave him those odin's blessings because i was that amped about the character now let's talk about the differences between his uniforms right so um you basically had his basic modern uniform and then you've got the professor x class classic uniform right so let's compare his classic uniform to his current skill tree really quickly i won't do the same for kitty pride in this video mostly because like it's, it's like uh, it's kitty pride so anyways <laughs> this is just me i'm an asshole right so anyways his uniform right so let's take a look at his uniform list. So on his uniform effect, he only had the mind damage inside of here, which was an increased mind damage by 10%. Well, his new uniform effect gives him increased chain hit damage by 15% with attacking and gives him guard break immunity. So now you saw the skills that I was just using. You can see how this is going to amplify his skills. So not to mention it changed the effect of mental master and brave wave manipulation. So let's take a look at some of his skills that he basically had on there. So it's really cool that we got this new ability, right? So his first skill, which was um excuse me um his first passive which was the mental master which was originally that's what it's called right here his mental master skill he still had the 90 percent chance for it to become immune to damage and then he got the 30 percent chance to penetrate with the mind immunity effect so that's really cool that they gave him that skill right making him even more powered inside his mental capacities his uh brainwave amplification now called will of krakoa he basically had a 20 percent mind damage uh, 30, excuse me <laughs> he had a 30 he had a 20 percent mind damage now he has a 35 percent mind damage increase he had the increased skill damage by 20 and 5 now it's 30 and 35 so that's a big bonus to the 35 and then he had now he has the decreased basic damage received by 20 percent so just on his passive skills alone we've got a nice boost for professor x he's not necessarily doing anything great but he is getting a boost in abilities for what the character does and to be honest with you professor x was one of my favorite characters to play inside world boss ultimate world uh in the beginning just because of the fact that his rotation was so easy you could basically i remember all of us playing people were playing like you know the world boss and you just basically stun locked the boss to death and you can just run in because he was just mental you know 
manipulating characters. So his first skill, which was me memory manipulation, is now called mind break. Uh, so we get the mind blast that used to be in there, which was had like a 30 um, 30 percent ignore immunity, is now gone. I'm not sure exactly why they did that. He still has the mind damage of 80 percent inside there, and then he gets a snare for three seconds instead of the mind resist. I think I would have preferred the mind resist, except that he is penetrating, has a chance to penetrate on his passives with the mind immunity effect. So. Mm, we'll see how that works out, right? Mm. So second skill that he had inside here, mental disruption. You basically have the immunity that was um, that was here, still there. So he gets the mind blast, increased mind resistance. He also decreases, uh, he loses out on a decrease of all speeds, but he keeps the 30% uh, ignores immunity. So that's good, right? But then he also gains a paralysis for, uh, which ignores immunity for two seconds. So that's good. He's still gonna be stun locking people into place, right? third skill is where we basically get a lot of the changes that are going to be happening here so he still keeps the mind blast which uh you know ignores the immunity and reduces the mind resist on it he also loses out on his incapacitation which removes active buffs from targets that one's a little bit bad right <clears throat> He loses out on the barrier. I don't really believe the barrier is needed necessarily, especially since his uniform has guard break immunity. But he also gains the recover 20% uh, of HP, which is nice on any character to see that recovery. He still keeps the frenzy buff inside of there. The th He's getting a 25, one and 25. So instead of it being basic attacks, basic defenses and all speeds is, is basic attack and defense. So 25, and uh, which is basically these two together in one now, right? And then there was the all speed at 1%. He still keeps, but then he gains the, t the critical rate of 25%, which is really nice because when you build the character, you don't have to hit that crit, late, crit rate max. It also removes, in the skill also removes incapacitation for seven seconds, which is also really nice as well, right? So then on his fourth skill, which was Phantom Flash, we have Fear on this skill for one second. Not too bad. We've got an exceptionally long cooldown time, still like he had at six seconds. But like I said, you can look at uh, Professor X and he's like rotating skills, really easy to just stun lock characters inside there. So he gains uh, the removes active buff from target that he missed out from on the other skill. And it just basically gets moved to this skill now, right? So then we also get the uh, mind control on this skill. Um, increased basic damage received by plus 1%. I'm not exactly sure what the hell that was all about. But anyways, it is what it is, right? And then we get the 100% chance to ignore uh, all damage immunity or to grant all damage and immunity. He also gets that increased basic damage by 50% for one attack that was on the previous skill. You can see it was here, it was 30% for one attack. That's moved to his fourth skill. So they like, they, we've, we've kind of grown accustomed to them doing this where they basically move around skills a little bit here. And then he get, he still has the mind blast, uh, which the, for 30% inside there, right? Okay, so moving over to his fifth skill over here, uh, a lot is still here, so not too bad. We get the silence, we get the fracture, we also get the mind blast still here. Um, we have the invincible for five seconds still there. The recovery for 15% is not there because that's moved on to another skill for the 20% HP. Um, then we get the uh, we still have the accumulation in here, which is still basically the same, so not a whole lot has changed there, right. That's essentially what we're getting for Professor X. And then his tier four skill is that basically he increases all element damage by 75%. And so the mind damage, um, you know, Cynic Alex or Beast Mode or Forgo or one of those guys would be more, uh, you know, probably better to tell you about this. I'm confused because I didn't really realize that uh, his mind was counted as element damage. That might've been something new to me. I don't know. Along with his uh, along with this, he is also getting a new artifact, right? And his new artifact is increasing mind damage by 30% of mind resist and increases basic damage dealt to alien characters by 15%. Now, the important part here is that that mind damage by 30% of the mind resist, right? Because we saw how powerful that was with a character like Thor, where when he had the, uh, the lightning damage by lightning resist skill. So that's kind of cool because he became his own self. He became his own leader through his own buff of you know lightning resist inside there so that was really really cool his leadership is a little bit uh the same way because he has the increase uh mine resist by 50 percent inside of there 
Uh, so you're not necessarily complaining about this at all because his leadership now becomes self-serving to him, right? Um, <laughs> which is really cool. I, I, I dig it. And then he has to increase all basic attacks by 20%. So I'm not like opposed to whatever they have for Professor X. To be per perfectly honest as well, like I said, the uniform slaps to me. Like it's it's really funny um, because like, you know, he, Professor X basically went full pit mode. Like that's exactly what I'm thinking about when I see the character. So like I said, I'm hoping that maybe they do something that gives away the artifact for free. Although I doubt that's going to happen, but it is what it is. Um, I am enjoying the fact that the character looks pretty insanely dope in my opinion uh, with the uniform. I, I think the detail could have been a little bit more popping, but I still respect what they gave. And the skills really got a nice little uh, graphical update to them, right? Only problem. Is like I said, in order to upgrade this character, you're going to have to go for an upgrade ticket because the chances that you have built up enough of the requirements basically to get this is is nil. Like, I mean, I, I, I play Dimension Duels every day and I've literally gotten nothing for this character. Like, it's absurd to me, right? So it's like nothing there. So let's take a look at the uniform options. First up, we got Crescent, right? Which is like, what the hell over? Um, then we get Captain Marvel, The Last Avengers. It's the best uniform for her. Same thing with the Light Series armor for Crescent. So not so bad there. Uh, you get Captain Marvel as another uniform. It's her best uniform. So if you like Captain Marvel and you're playing her, cool there. Then we get She-Hawk, Attorney at Law. It's her best uniform as well. So not bad. We get venom king in black it's his best uniform so not bad and then unfortunately we had wolverine house of x and this is where it like turns off like i never purchased that wolverine <laughs> house of x uniform and like i'm like trying to figure it out for the life of me yo bro why we go there like what what was the reason for that like i don't know like it is what it is i guess you know like I'm not too exactly stoked, stoked about it, but I also don't see paying, you know, 1,050 crystals for this uniform either. I mean, this is the uniform for the characters, the Enter the Phoenix uniform. Like, that's the uniform that we should have went with. Whatever. It is what it is, I guess, at this point, but that's Professor X. Now... It, it, the uniform's not necessarily going to matter to you so much like you hit these points and these percentages because you've got good cards and you've been working on your cards like you should be and you know the uniform options become you know a thing of the past you know it is what it is so i like the mind resistance side here i forgot about that because it increases mind resist by 10 percent as part of his ability so his 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 uh leadership gets a, a added buff there Ooh, yeah 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 i didn't think about that uh, next up, we got Kitty Pride, right? So Kitty Pride, um, I, I, like I said already, I'm not writing home about this uniform in any shape, form, or respect. Uh, you know, she's only had the one uniform inside the game, so anything for her would have been a step up in skills. You know what I mean? So let's take a look at what her previous skills were underneath here. Like I said, anything for the character was going to be a step up. Like it just didn't make a difference, right? So like her uniform effect, she's going to get invisibility, ignore targeting, which is for five seconds. She gets uh, this is when hit activation rate. She gets 100% chance to grant immunity. Uh, all damage immunity now she's on a 20 second cooldown timer for this but this should make her survivable inside there her leadership ability which was a good leadership before because it applied to all mutant allies was a standard 55 and 6 for the critical rate and now it's a 60 and 6 so just a little minor buff up tweak for it i think you know people will complain about that because it's just i mean you could have just went to 70 or something like that like for real for real if you wanted her to be fully usable or just give her one, give her a, a passive like Scott, basically, you know, something like where the, she could be ally support because like the interference here is like, I'm not going to want to run her necessarily with Professor X in the lead because Professor X should be his own leadership buff, especially with his skills where he's in getting the, the mind damage by mind resist. I want to use him as his own leadership. So the two characters went inside the update. Mm, OK, but I could use Kitty with some other mutant type characters, depending on if we get more Marauders, more Quiet Council coming right so her passives she previously had Lockheed's helping hand where she summons the illusion she still has that summons illusions 100 of the summer stats and then she gets an increased basic damage dealt with machine type characters and machine ability characters inside there um that's what she had before now she's going to get increased skill damage by 30 percent increased bonus damage by 30 percent she still summons the one with 100 attack and defense and 150 percent hp of the summer changes the creature's ability to the character's abilities so it's kind of cool but i don't know like 
uh, looking at Kitty's skills wasn't necessarily something that was like just jumping off the page at me. Untouchable Shadow, she basically gets the same here, where it's basically it's, it's the same. It's like a five percent increase, right? It's thirty thirty, so it still stays the same with guarantee dodge rate, grassy crit. It's just thirty thirty, and everything else is the same. So it's like <laughs> it's nothing there. Like I hate to say it, but it's like it, it's minor. It's it's really minor. So um, Kitty Spin Kick, right, is now called Marauder Slash. So still deals bleed damage on on the character or whatever, and then you get the decreased recovery rate with that as well. Um, so you lose stun and fracture on the skill. So that that kind of sucks, especially if you were looking at like ABX or some shit, right? Now Quick Cat Attack is Queen's Blade. She gets burned on this skill. And then, you know, the burn basically has fracture as well. So we keep the fracture, but we lose the stun, we lose the fear, and we lose the decrease all basic defenses, which was a 30% boost, right? Her third ability um, is was Surging Shadow, is now called Lockheed Launcher. Deals burn on this skill instead of damn, uh, instead of, um, instead of bleed. Uh, she loses the fear ability. She gains the recovery for 20% HP and she gains 100% increase of HP. The skill loses the defense all down and it loses the accumulation on her third ability. So we start to roll into her fourth skill. And on her fourth skill, which is now called um, Dragon Slice, she gets burned on this skill. So she loses out on that ability. She loses stun and she loses fear. She loses the decrease all defenses as well. And then she gains a frenzy buff of 41 and 20 and removes incapacitation. So, like, it's just not a whole lot there, like, on the meat on potatoes, especially when you look at some of the skills she's losing. On her fifth skill, which is now called Captain's Command, she regains the accumulation here. She also gets the decrease all basic defenses, which stacks up to 40 now here. And then she gets the burn for damage instead of the bleed. And she gets the silence on the skill as well. Kitty also gains a tier three ability. Not a lot to write home. The bleed is on that ability for tier three. She gets the recovery rate by 50, uh, decreased recovery rate by 50%. She gets the ignore target's dodge rate by 80%. She gets invincible for eight seconds, increased basic damage by 100% and physical damage. So hopefully like you can roll out of that skill for cancel because that's look like is where it's going to be, right? Like I can ignore your dodge rate, cast invincible, get the damage increased attack, and then hopefully roll from that 1% damage attack into that so let's equip that other uniform for her right here so like i said that's the thing right is that any uniform for her was going to be a big bonus up the fact that she gets a tier three we're going to see massive improvements for the character overall it is what it is i will still level the character up especially because she's a tier three that leadership ability is going to probably be quite essential to the character you can see lockheed sitting over there continually attacking so you got her one skill uh she just basically like steps up and then like steps down which is kind of cool right then we got her two ability inside here it's like a forward slash and then the back there's no iframes on that skill whatsoever it looks like yeah, there's no iframes on that two skill, so expect to be guard broken. You see the third skill there? This is a long wind-up time for that skill. It's a long wind-up time. So then we get the fourth skill inside here. I, I, I really liken this to BDO's Corsair skill. That's is, is essentially what I'm thinking about here. Fifth skill, she basically summons in. It looks like she like slams down with the ship's uh, mast. I'm not sure if that's what you call it, but yeah weird that kitty just came in with that and then let's take a look at her sixth skill she got the air steps inside there and she does a little bit of x up damage on the on character right so that's essentially kitty like i'm not exactly overall ecstatic about the character she's not somebody that i would purchase a 40 dollars uniform upgrade ticket to be honest with you, I think there's far better leaderships to put on characters than to have Kitty's leadership um, in the mix. You know, I would have preferred that she had maybe something to make her like utility base inside the support role for like, you know, passive or uniform. But that's like that's 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 the meat and potatoes of what they got there. Right. So it is what it is. We've got a few updates inside here and the updates like are like oddly like, yo, what the hell is going on? Like, you know, like. <clears throat> the the one thing that's like really bugging me about the game as of late is that like they haven't really done enough to essentially address um the rewards in the game so like for instance tier three awards matching to the store uh tier four materials matching to the store and tier three tier 
tier three materials being matched inside there. Like even inside the support shop, like if you were to go to uh, dispatch missions and you went to the uh, uh, dispatch shop, not the support shop, I don't know why I did that. But you go to like dispatch missions, right? Where, where the hell am I? Why am I lost? So if you were inside dispatch missions, you went to the dispatch shop, I don't know how many times you basically go inside here and you basically look at the rewards that they've got inside there and you wonder like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why am I paying 120 crystals for a four star comic book? Like, for real. And then you'll see like some of things come up over here where you're really questioning like, yo, like hidden tickets. 10 of them will cost me like 2000 crystals. Like it just doesn't make sense. Like they need to update these rewards to match the needs that they have. Because even like when we look at like transcendent tier boxes, like, like for instance, we're getting T3 and transcendent upgrade packs. And I'm wondering like, why is that $70? Like tier three is like a distant thing. Like it's not it is what it is, I guess. Like, you know, my, maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree there or whatever. They've got like the art art book comic celebration coming back. But like, really, does anybody need those? No, I don't know. Professor X has his telepathy chest that he has inside of the shop. Um, and <laughs> so like, let's go over here real quick. I want to show you this because this is like the funny thing, right? Normally, when these chests are introduced into the game, right? So like these chests. They typically include the bios of the character. You know what I mean? Like you could get the bios from the character. But guess what? You don't get no bios for Professor X inside this chest. Why? Like, I think for a character, I get that, you know, the mutants are a specific type of character and they've got them locked behind different things. But like you've devalued the chest and you've made it not a worthwhile investment because we already know we're not going to get these materials right so more than likely we're going to end up with gold and phoenix feathers nobody really cares about the comic cards but like the best thing overall to have engaged in these was to just give me professor x bios so or kitty bios inside here so that way i could purchase these and make it make it that way you know but whatever i guess <laughs> it's just one of those things like i'm i like overall i'm like give us something some kind of incentive to buy these things i'm just not seeing it which brings me to my next point because or my last point which is the um the bonus missions right i hate to say this but like you like just lock locked out people of like their bonus missions because like i had to pray to you know get professor up to mythic for this in order to basically get those rewards for the uniform upgrade tickets but are you gonna do the same thing for like the red queen uniform and even when you look at reaching to kitty to tier three like i'm getting phoenix feathers tier four like i don't know i like who's reaching tier four this quickly to get those ti those titan component packs it's just i don't know a little off-putting to me but that's the update i plan on bringing you guys some in-depth detail review and uh follow-on videos for professor x because i definitely plan on taking him to uh to excuse me i plan on taking him to level 80 i don't think that there's going to be any time soon where i could actually get him to tier four immediately because unfortunately if you were to go into i think a lot of people's inventory unless i was wailing out in this game unfortunately there's not a whole lot to basically get these materials and like books you can see i'm low on there's absolutely no way that i'm touching you know anything in tier four with the carbonadium um this is like me doing a couple of weeks of like you know now two two weeks i think of me doing uh world boss uh legend and still nothing and even the souls of the fall team like i'm exceptionally low on souls of the fall team as well and they've given us no way to accelerate you know the 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 capability of get, grabbing these tier four materials so like you unless i pay which i understand right unless i pay i, I do understand the need to generate revenue but unless i pay i can't tier four characters i basically have to come inside here each and every month to essentially go inside my tier four advancement packs and make that purchase to get these materials so that way I can advance a character. And the bad thing about it is I don't have a need to do that. Like I, you, you've you made, the game has, it'd be one thing if you made it so that way I felt like there was impending doom or like I was gonna have this fear of missing out. But it's, essentially it goes back to what I told everybody in the beginning. As long as you have a character that can complete it, I only need five characters to complete the world bosses, the world boss legends. 
you don't need to go to level 90, level 80 of World Boss Legend. You just need to be able to complete level two because you'll get the same damn rewards. Now there's rewards at Conqueror's level and every five levels that you can definitely achieve in order to get better rewards in terms of like some of the uh, materials and stuff like that. But in terms of like your daily day-to-day -day play, you don't need anything other than the, outside of the five characters that you have. I am all about tier four and characters that I love until they start making it easy. And then I'll tier four as many people as I as I can. It's the way I stay ahead of the race in the crystal department most of the times. And right now I've tier four all the characters currently that I love besides Magneto and now Professor X. And we'll see what happens when, you know, some of the other characters start to roll out like Odin and Thanos. But we'll see what happens. Right. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time. Peace.